Welcome back to Napoleonic Stacking. I'm the Napoleonic Stacker, and in this video I'm going to showcase some of the silver that I picked up last week, and we're going to talk a little bit about how world events are moving the price of silver today. Stay tuned. Leading in from last week into today, we've seen a whirlwind of events unfolding before our very eyes. First of all, precious metals has had one of its largest moves in months, moving up over $24 per ounce. And we've also seen a significant correction in the stock market. And of course, right now, there's tensions in Europe with Ukraine and Russia. And to take a look at how all this affects you and your precious metal investment, we first have to go back to the Federal Reserve. And what the Fed said for this year is basically they're going to begin tapering down their asset purchases and have up to three rate increases in 2022. The news of this, of course, has spooked the market. The growth stocks, people are getting out of growth stocks and putting their money into value stocks and it's causing a pretty significant correction in the stock market. Combine that with the fear of war between Russia and Ukraine, and basically with the fear index where it's at, it's driving metal prices higher. Now, if the stock market continues to drop, you may see silver prices move lower with the market, and that's not a time to panic. Basically what that means is investors are selling off their paper contracts, the SLV, to cover their margin calls. And generally what we see with precious metals is they make a faster recovery, and after that recovery they find new highs. And it may not be an all-time new high, but higher than it was before the market correction happened to begin with. But ultimately we have little control over where the markets go and who goes to war with who and how that's going to affect you and I. Ultimately, we want to hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. And for me, that's what stacking is. It's preparedness, it's an insurance policy, it's peace of mind that helps me to sleep at night. So with all that being said, I'm going to show you all some cool pickups that I made last week, starting with this. This is a silver Napoleon spoon that I received from my local coin shop. They had received a whole bunch of silver spoons and other silverware and they found this among the collection and decided to give it to me as a gift. So shout out again to my local coin shop WNC Coins. And you can see here this is like the bust of Napoleon with his arms crossed. Pretty cool. It's got some nice designs down the spoon, and it says Paris. And here you can see the hallmarks, the purity, and then the, the maker's mark. And this is actually an 80% silver spoon. So pretty cool. And while I was there, I also decided to pick up this OPM bar. This is from Ohio Precious Metals Company, which is now defunct because of massive corruption, but OPM's been around for a long time and they've produced some really good silver. And this is a chunky 10 ounce bar, and you can see it's got kind of a mirror finish. How, just how reflective silver is is amazing. And this is three nines fine silver. On the back, you can see it's got the OPM pattern. So just some straight up silver bullion I'm, I'm glad to have. I did have a long-awaited package from Atmex that also showed up today, and within that package I got a 2022 Silver Koala. And you can see he's a sleepy fellow there, just kind of resting on the eucalyptus branch. And this is struck at the Perth Mint in Australia. It's four nines fine silver, years 2022. And I've been collecting these just about every year I've been stacking. And they improve the collectability of these because of the fact the koala changes from year to year. I would rate this coin as somewhere in the semi-numismatic category. It's not something I would stack a whole lot of, but 
getting one per year to kind of add some variety to your stack can be a good thing. And on the back here, you've got Queen Elizabeth II. It says $1. Australia. So, very nice. I also picked up an Italian commemorative coin. And on this coin, this is Dante Alighieri. And if you don't know who Dante Alighieri is, he wrote the Divine Comedy. And what the Divine Comedy was, was basically his interpretation of heaven, purgatory, and hell. And on the back of this coin, you can see there's a representation of heaven, paradiso. The middle part with the fog is supposed to be purgatorio. And then you've got the fire, which is the inferno. And I actually ended up reading Dante's Inferno when I was in the seventh grade. And it absolutely scared me to death. And I had nightmares about it. <laughs> Again, one man's interpretation of heaven, hell, and purgatory. But I just, I saw this coin. I thought it was so cool. I had to get it. And this is 500 lira, and it's from 1965. Again, you can see here. There's the beautiful mug of Dante. Also with my Atmex package, I picked up another one of the Morgan silver dollars that I was missing from my collection. This is a 1892. It's in VG, VF condition. That's basically how I bought it. You tell me what you think. And this particular Morgan came from Philadelphia. And the Morgan dollars, I absolutely love. They're the most collected coins in the world, and especially in the United States. And I'm trying to put together a full set of these, but this particular one was uh, kind of the last Morgan that I could get for an affordable price. All of the other Morgans that I need for the set are key dates, and they're in the you know upper hundreds to thousands of dollars. So it's going to take me a while to pick up the full set but eventually I'm going to get it, hopefully. And then we went to an antique shop, and I saw a Cuban coin. Now, Cuban silver is hard to find, primarily because of the embargoes we've had with Cuba. We don't see a whole lot of Cuban anything in this country. And this is a 90% silver, uh, 20 centavos. And this is from 1915. And you can see here it shows it's 5 grams of... 9.9 .9 pure silver. And on the back, you can see here it says Republica de Cuba, 20 centavos. So very cool. This is actually my first 20 cent piece from Cuba. I also have a 50 cent piece, but these coins were actually struck in the United States for the Cuban government because the Cubans don't have silver and they didn't have a mint at the time to make their own coinage. And after Fidel Castro took power, the Cubans ended up, of course, having to make their own currency at that point. So the U.S., they, they were cut off from the U.S. But these coins are really cool, and they're pretty rare in the United States. Now, also, I picked up this piece. This is actually my first Greek silver coin, and this is from 1964. It's got King Constantine II here with his wife, and this was basically to commemorate their marriage. Uh, I'm not really sure. I should have done more research. But um, basically, it's a 30 drachma, 0.835% silver. And on the back, you can see it's got the, the imperial eagle here, the double-headed eagle, and 30. So pretty cool. This last piece I also got from Apmex. It comes from the Paris Mint, and it's a 200-year anniversary commemorative coin of Napoleon. And I'm going to unbox this for us so we can take a look. And you can see here on the front it's got Napoleon. It shows Monet de Paris. And on the back it basically talks a little bit about the bicentennial of Napoleon's death. You can pause the video to read this if you'd like. I'm not going to read it to everyone. And we'll go ahead and take it out of the box. So, very nice packaging for this coin. 
and on the little COA, we can see here this is a 20 euro silver proof 2021 coin. Um, if, if you didn't know, 2021 was the 200th anniversary of the death of Napoleon. Specifications, it's 20 euros, three nines fine silver, it weighs 31.1 grams, diameter is 37 millimeters, and it has a mintage of 3,000, so fairly low mintage for this coin. And I'm going to try and get it out of the capsule, or get it out of the packaging here. With these modern French coins, they're absolutely terrible to get out of the holder, but I managed to get it for us here so we can take a look. And you can see here, this is basically the head of Napoleon, and he's wearing his bicorn hat. It shows 1821 to, eight, to 2021, and you can see it's got some of his old guard here on the hat. You can see it's got the rooster, and it has these bees kind of filling in the background. And the B is basically the oldest symbol of France. And it basically symbolizes the new Napoleonic dynasty. It also symbolizes immortality and so many other things that Napoleon wanted to associate with France. So the B was his symbol. And on the back here, you can see it's got the Napoleonic eagle with a kind of a sunburst. It shows 20 euros. In the middle, you've got the, the sigil of Napoleon there and kind of the shadowy outline of Napoleon with, again, kind of the background fields being those bees. And I think this is just an absolutely great tribute piece to Napoleon. And it's really funny. The French have kind of a love-hate relationship with the, the former French emperor. Some people, you know, absolutely adore him. Others, you know, think he was a was a curse on the country and then there's a lot of people just kind of in the in between but ultimately he was a he was a polarizing figure and he was a significant figure in not just European history but world history and I think it's great that the Paris Mint decided to commemorate the emperor on this coin now I do have another Napoleonic coin from the Paris Mint that I haven't shown anyone yet if you'd like to see it please put the just please put it in the comment section and I'll pull it out at some point. But I'm very excited to have this one. I think it looks really cool. But that's pretty much what I have for y'all today. If you liked what you saw, please give me a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It certainly helps the YouTube algorithm. And I do thank you so much for watching. And until next time, Napoleonic Stacker, signing out.